but yes hello um this vod is probably gonna end up on youtube and since i can properly start <laughs> um today we will be tackling in new game plus um we're continuing my new game plus marathon and we're gonna be tackling uh, for heaven's ward the side story quest called tales of the dragon song war which is um I did it before go moving on to Stormblood, and I regret nothing. <laughs> it was It's basically one final goodbye to the Heaven's Ward story before moving on. The paths we walk, the oaths we swear, the legacies we leave. Sharing triumphs and bearing burdens, the Warrior of Light embarks on a journey of reminiscence and recollection in a land that now heals from a long and bitter war. I... Um, I'm probably gonna end up in tears at some point. I, I, we, I might end up in tears at some point during this quest line. We'll see. But yes, um, to pick it up, a lot of people don't know this because the quest is marked yellow like any other typical side quest you'd skip. I really wish they'd fix that and give it a different marker. Like, uh, because there's a lot of good story quests out there that just are very badly marked on the map. I really hope they decide to fix it one day. Uh, we need to go to the last vigil. Uh, I'm gonna get so nostalgic. I also have an actual uh, Dragoon Glam. <laughs> I have a Dragoon Glam ready to go for this just to get my inner Heaven's Ward on. So, uh, I don't know how I found out about this, honestly. I just randomly saw there was a side quest in here one day, I guess. Deep in thought, the house for Tom, manservant, reflects upon a day not so very long ago. T'was bitterly cold when you first came to our city, when I stood waiting for you before the Ark of the Worthy. To think that was where it all began, how much has changed since that day? Forgive me, of late I've been studying the works of Beladian poet king who wrote to ye who ask of things to come, give thought to what is past and gone. So rarely have we the luxury to reflect on the choices we have made, on how they have shaped our lives and the lives of others. Even I, a mere steward whose deeds would not merit a footnote in the annals of history, can see value in this. I say this to you, Master Hirasol, because, because as you move, so too does this world. Please spare a moment to contemplate your journey while you can. The road stretched on, obscured by an endless veil of snow, somewhere in the white beyond stood great iron gates, and on the other side, a humble manservant who awaited the coming of three travelers. Oh, it's been a long time since I've heard that quest sound effect. <laughs> yeah, um, also, I'm capped out on side quests because um, I'm going to be turning these in as Sage for Endwalker. <laughs> He, I kept, uh, Zeppla made an, uh, advice, uh, tip about it on her YouTube video that went up today. Let's go to the Jewel the Crozier. I remember being so con uh, just so wowed by everything when I first started Heaven's Ward, you know? Like, um, I came in here with my friend. We both finished a Rome Reborn and we just wanted to get into Ishgard. And we G-posed at the Aetherite Plaza for such a long time and we were, we were just so happy to be in an expansion. <laughs> A warm welcome to you, Master Hirasol. To what do I owe the pleasure? Retracing your steps from those first days in Ishgard. I see. Well, no one could begrudge you in indulging in a little nostalgia. I am reminded how much I owe you and yours. Lest you forget, foreign merchants were subject to a frankly unreasonable level of scrutiny until relatively recently. Not so now, however. Now, goods from every corner of Eorzea flow into our markets. And that, my friend, is a change we can all appreciate. Merchants of all nations speak a common tongue, and its words are coin. 
Needless to say, there is little profit to be had in prejudice, especially against those who have perceived the patronative account. Thus, when the wards of House for Tom arrived, she was only too happy to make their acquaintance. <laughs> it's been a very long time since I remember talking with her. It's, pro it's been well over a year since I started Heaven's Ward. I think I started it at the start of September 2020. It's been a long <laughs> journey to get to where I am now. Hello. What'll it be then? Ale? Mold wine? No, no, don't tell me. Tea? <laughs> oh, so it's to be memories then, is it? Now there's a bitter draught that'll leave you wanting. Assuming you can remember your own name, that is. Take your friend, Tataru. One moment, she's just another girl waiting on customers, clearing tables and so forth. And the next, she's got a dozen admirers asking after her every bloody night. And I'll be damned if I can remember how it happened. <laughs> Love that Ella's in Laugh animation. Singing those stupid songs, dancing those daft dances. Though, to be honest, I think it was her stories that really won him over. Stories of a certain hero's grand adventures across Eorzea, told with a flair that put a minstrel to shame. Who doesn't love a good heel hero's tale, am I right? Hells, we've even got one about the man who built this tavern, was one of the founding fathers of Ishgard, or so it goes. Now, as the Enchiridion told it, besides Haldrath, oh, the only knights who survived the battle with Nidhogg were the founders of the High Houses. Of course, those days, we all know better than to put too much stock in the words of the church, huh? <laughs> we sure do. But there's been more to our tales than just words. There's a sword, too. One which has been passed down from proprietor to proprietor before anyone can remember. She's a rusty old bugger, but if you look closely at her handle, you can just make about an inscription. Brothers brave and true, live well, forgotten and content. A man who forsook wealth and fame, and chose the life of a humble tavern keeper. It's just a tale, of course, albeit a good one. As for the truth, who can say, friend? Who can say? He knew everyone's story, though he would never share his own. An optimist, he wanted to believe in the best the people. Sometimes that faith would be awarded, other times betrayed, but he would listen regardless, and he would hope. And we are off to Clam Count Camp Cloudtop. They um they make it very clear, like in the in the journal up there what you're where you're supposed to go um they don't do that um for a certain objective at the end of the quest line which i noticed this is very interesting where are we off to then Lania, Laniati, Laniat? <laughs> I, I never could get her name right. Master Hirosol, it, it was but this moment thinking of you. I'd hoped to speak with you at Sir Americk's investiture, but circumstances conspired to prevent me from attending. Mayhap you allow me to say now what I could not say then. On behalf of House Hylenart and all of Ishgard, I offer unto you my deepest and most humble thanks. You risked your life to stand against our sworn enemy and freed us from a millennium of torment. Though we can never hope to repay you, we will ever remember you and your deeds, that our children and their children's children might know the man whom they owe their lives. Oh, and of course we just say no. <laughs> um, I concede that the grand investiture would have been a bit more fitting occasion for such words, but... Cannot risk them being left unspoken. What brings you this way? As you can see, Clamp Cloudtop remains much the same as it did during the war. Though we need no longer watch the skies for Javani and Outliers, 
the Vanu Vanu have proven themselves similarly worthy of our attention. Oh, it's these guys. <laughs> I say, old boy, you have a most uncanny ability to appear whenever I least expect you. But enough about that. Honor row it? Ah, uh, yes, my lord. Ahem. Um, Lady Laniat. I am pleased to report that we succeeded in infiltrating Vundu territory, and there observed the beastmen harvesting crystals at several different sites. Based on the volume of crystals acquired during our period of surveillance, I have prepared an estimate of how much time I believe it will take the Vundu to gather sufficient crystals for another summoning. I have also taken the liberty of drafting proposals outlining how the Rose Knights might prevent such an eventuality such as raiding these sites and securing their stores, as well as a detailed assessment of the risks should you choose to proceed. Ahem. <laughs> By the fury, I gathered you were clever, but I was not aware that you were capable of this. With respect, you are wasted on your master. Hardworking, full of potential. Aye, I think there is a place for you here, with the Rose Knights, if you would have it. <laughs> that you would even consider taking me into your service is a tremendous honor, my lady, and were I free to do so, I should gladly accept, but I am pledged to another, as you well know. Regrettable, but understandable. I take comfort in the fact that a youth of your talent and character will never want for opportunities. Pledge to another, you rascal. I thought I saw you whispering in young Salayette's ear the other day. You certainly wasted no time wooing our newest maid. There will be no secrets between us. You must tell me everything. Where you've been sneaking off together, what adventures you've been having, every little detail. And don't you dare leave anything out. <laughs> huh. I am sure he will not. In any event, you have jointly exceeded my expectations. I grant you leave to return to the city. Should the, deed, should the need arise, I shall call upon you again. Thank you, my lady. I believe we shall do as you suggest. Until we meet again, Master Hirasol. Bye now. Not so fast. The next airship isn't due for another hour, and we have so much to talk about. Honor it! Honor it! For all the ladies' disdain, it was an old familiar dance. To her, Lord Amonalane would always be the boy fumbling for a compliment, and perhaps there was a comfort in that. A memory of home in the bleak frontier. In all honesty, we could do easily without their assistance, and yet, I cannot deny that a part of me has come to look forward to their impromptu visits. <laughs> And now we are off to the falcon's nest. A thousand pardons, Master Hito Soul. Had I known you were planning to pay us a visit, I would have seen that you received a proper reception, a feast perhaps, or at least a formal welcome, with the men in full dress. <laughs> no, no, no. Also, I'm sorry that my dog's being a little grim gremlin. I don't understand what he's doing back there. You have more than earned it. One need only look at to the pilgrims who come in their droves to pray before the relief to see the truth of that. Some abide in silence, while others shed tears. Not for sorrow, you understand, but for joy. Joy at, from, at being released from Nidhogg's torment. Sir Redwald, the shipping has been unloaded and the quartermaster confirms that all the supplies have been accounted for. Master Hirasol, are you here on official business?
A journey to remember and reflect. I, much has changed since first we came here together, since I abandoned you to follow the heretic's trail alone. Come, my lord, may have you recall the survivor whom you carried back to Falcon's Nest that day? Well, his wife but recently gave birth to the first child. Is that so? Well, well, mayhap I should pay him a visit. Though he would doubtless be honored, my lord, you need not put yourself to such trouble. Your responsibilities as count surely leave little enough time as it is. Think not on that, I am still me and you are still you. Whatever our respective titles, I would speak to you as a friend. This preoccupation with position and power has so no end of discord between our two houses, and to the great detriment of our nation. It is especially galling when one considers that much of what we have achieved was by virtue of our blood, and not our character. So call me Count, if you must, but know that I take no pride in it. Mayhap one day when I have earned it, I will, but not today. Still himself, is he? As an honorable man, mindful of tradition, he was loath to accept the assistance of a foreigner in exile. But when forced to confront bitter truths, he looked within and found himself wanting. Pride be damned, then, if it led one astray. He would set aside his prejudices and join hands with this gifted outcast for the greater good of Ishgard. One moment, y'all. I got pinged on something very annoying. Here we go. Where are we off to next? We're gonna visit the Supreme Sacred Tribunal of... Oh, uh... That's... Oh, the Tribunal. It actually is a... Thing. I actually... Uh, this beginning part of the quest line is, is getting really hazy for me about who you actually visit. But it's literally just like one final goodbye to everyone. And they never really made a quest line like this for Stormblood or Shadowbringers or A Realm Reborn really for that matter. They sort of did with Shadowbringers. We'll talk about that next week. Two foreign heretics against two knights of the Heaven's Ward. Under the watchful gaze of the Fury, they would fight, and the winner's claims would be proven true. It was the opening gambit of a greater game whose stakes would remain unknown for some time. That was... I believe this was where Amaric was put to trial, right? It's been a very long time. <laughs> But I believe that's what we were talking about. Where are we off to here then? Oh, the vault itself. Hello. You are Master Hirasol, am I, if I am not mistaken? We have met, though I'm sure you don't, do not remember. It was a seeming lifetime ago when you answered the Archbishop's summons. I, I often come here to reflect upon all that has come to pass. And when I saw you gazing at the Holy Vault, I thought perhaps that you had, too. You've turned our world upside down. Everything we held dear, for change, for the truth? They say it had to be done, that his grace sought godhood. If so, then perhaps it was the Fury's will that you prevail. But to say it, to believe it, 
I know that no man is without sin, but he, he was pious and humble, wholly devoted to the church and his people. I knew him, sir, and he was a good man. Whatever else he may have been, I will remember him as a good man. If you say so, I certainly don't. <laughs> to walk the righteous path, to live for the sake of others, to rise to the highest station yet remain powerless to bring an end to your people's suffering. What price salvation then? What sacrifice beyond reason? For uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. And we are off to Limza, of all places. I believe this is the point of the quest line where we're gonna get slingshot all over the map. And I do mean everywhere. <laughs> the servers have been full of so many people. As we, uh, in a week from now, um, December 1st is the official final day of the Shadowbringers expansion. It'll be the last full day you'll be able to play Shadowbringers. And then Endwalker will officially begin December 3rd. Oh, I missed it. Whoopsie. Salix, this is most unexpected. Do you have business with the Admiral? A journey of remembrance, you say? Well, far be it for me to deny you. Unannounced or not, I suspect the admirable Admiral will most be most displeased if she heard that I had turned you away. You're off, then. There she is. Thank the Navigator. I had resigned myself to another day spent listening to my advisors prattle on about the Beastmen's latest movements. Come, Salix, tell me of your adventures. Hello, Merlewib. <laughs> the Ashgardians sail in uncharted waters. Though I hope these new reforms of theirs meet with no resistance, it would not be the first grand voyage to run afoul of reefs ere it properly began. But with Sir Amaric at the helm, they may yet chart a course for generations to follow. Which is not to say our own doesn't need correcting. The Alliance has grown complacent. The bloody nose you gave us at the Malay showed me that. Nor have I forgotten the lessons of the banquet. Let's just assured, we will root out any further turncoats before the dagger is at our back. You have my word on that, and Lady Yukiris besides. And believe me, it sure paid off in the recent years. It really did pay off. She had never been one to retreat, much less in the face of transparent theatrics. But this had been no ordinary battlefield. Its rules of engagement anything but clear. So she would watch, but and she would learn. And in time, she would act. Never again, Salix. Never again. And this is where, um... This is the most uh, infuriating part about this quest line, is it has multiple parts. So I know so many people who are like, oh, I thought this was where the quest line ended, over here in Mordona. And no, that is incorrect. There are four quests to do, and we only finished the first one. But yeah, I was very mad, and I know so many people who are still not done with this quest line, and I've been harping to them for over a year now to finish <laughs> and maybe one day they will but it won't be anytime soon <laughs> it's very disappointing and i really hope that they do finish you know one day master salix is autumnus i am both flattered and surprised that you should remember my small role in this tale given the grandeur of your subsequent endeavors. Though I must confess to having derived some selfish pleasure from donning the garments of the shinobi once more, I am honored to have been able to assist in freeing General Raubon in his capacity. And I believe that I speak for all of my countrymen when I say that we are most grateful to have been granted the opportunity to contribute to the restoration of the Scions. Much has changed, it is true. 
and much may never be as it once was, but in watching you and yours rise from the ashes and rebuild, I am reminded that we must never give in to despair, for there is always something which may yet be saved. And we are still not done. There is... we need to continue. The second part, the oaths we swear. Prevention was ever better than cure, as Higuri knows only too well. Will you be traveling to Ulda next? If so, I would ask a favor of you. I have prepared a special unguent to aid in General Raubon's rehab rehabilitation. Injuries such as his must be tended to daily, even long after they have healed. You need only deliver it to his man, Commander Swift. He will see that the Flame General receives it. And we are off to Ulda. Few shinobi have the fortitude and strength of will to return to the battlefield after suffering so grievous of an injury. Not only do they struggle to adapt their techniques, but many complain of strange and inexplicable aches. Should General Raubon experience them, it is my hope that this unjuant will help. Oh, and it's Alpha! I just noticed! <laughs> Hi, Alpha. Aww. And Omega's here, too. We will be dealing with, um, we will be doing the New Game Plus quest line for those two on Monday. We will. And I am excited. I didn't even notice until the last second there before, as I was teleporting. Alpha caught me off guard. <laughs> Look at him. Aww. It is currently November 26, 2021. Uh, I know I mentioned this in my Coils video, but uh, I, I just like mentioning it, mentioning it at when, for these special streams. Greetings, Salix. What is it that you have there? All my side quest items, don't look at those. I'll, I'll have them done eventually. Unjuin, I was not aware that the general required such stuff. And one of our Doman friends made this for him, did she? Very well. I shall be sure to pass it on. Actually, wait here. We have just this moment concluded a meeting, and I suspect he would be glad to speak with you before returning to the palace. Hey. So, Commander Swift tells me you have come all this way to deliver Unjuant. Daily, she says. Ha. Huh. Well, mayhap it's best to be prudent. The gods alone know why you agreed to deliver it for her, though. Unless you mean to favor me that rematch I requested. Ha 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 I just, lad. You are on a journey of reflection, are you not? I, Merwib, said as much. And now you want to relive the moment you pulled me from the pit and Il Ilverd left me in to rot. It shames me to think of it, but that I was so blind to his hatred. Lolorito tells me it was not always so, that Ilbert admitted to him he once believed that I would return to Alamigo at the head of an army. Oh, this is, remember, remember, this is written before Stormblood. But years has passed, and I did nothing. For all my accomplishments, for all my wealth, power, and influence, I did not to better the plight of my people. Not for a lack of trying, but Ilbert didn't know. He thought the Boulevard Alamigo had grown fat and complacent, that my story set a bad example for our countrymen. Forget your homeland and chase the old Don dream, a fine impossible dream which gave men the strength to endure their hardships and try to make new lives for themselves here. So the dream had to die. He would kill me, stir up the disillusioned, arm them at the monetarist's expense, and then... And then... Forgive me. The Scions paid the price of my failings. The gods know I have no shortage of debts to repay. A vows to keep and duties to discharge, but mark me well, lad. There will be a reckoning. Mayhap not today, mayhap not tomorrow, but a reckoning there will be. Nod. A refugee of a fallen nation, he had risen the depths from the depths of poverty to claim a seat on the syndicate, yet for all of his great deeds, one was left undone. 
And like sand through an hourglass, the years slipped by, taking with them an old friend's hope. Don't worry, Raubon, I promise you, things will get better in Stormblood. <laughs> and we are off to the Falcon's Nest once again. And this is where um, I'm going to get very, very sad. <laughs> We're going to talk about one of my favorite characters in this game. <laughs> It really is a shame that they never, ever went back and made anything like this for Stormblood or Shadowbringer. They sort of did for Shadowbringers again with the, the roll quests and Eden, I guess. But, nah. There's also Tales from the Shadows, but um, that only really tackles two characters. They never really made anything like this just to help you like have a quest line to just say goodbye to an expansion properly. Uh, there's a YouTuber I followed. She uh, did the whole quest line in one YouTube video, did no commentary, and uploaded it as her final Heaven's Word video. She stood at the final spot of this quest line with a bunch of people until the server shut down for Stormblood maintenance, and I thought that was such a cool, cool way to spend your final time of Heaven's Ward. By the Fury, is that you, Master Hirasol? Forgive me, but what reason could you have possibly have for returning to this godforsaken place? Mayhap it is fate which brings you here on this day of introspection and reflection. We are come to Gorgongane Mills to accept the surrender of a half a dozen heretics who once fought for the Lady Iceheart. If you are intending to visit the cellars, I would ask you do nothing to unsettle them. We are off. There are these rumors of a general amnesty for Lady Iceheart's followers have caused no small amount of dissent in the ranks. It was so not long ago that they were ambushing our convoys dressed as civilians after all. But if it is to be a choice between reconciliation and a return of violence, I choose reconciliation. I choose that too. It's been so long. This is where we first ran into the heretics in Heaven's Ward. It's been so, so long. Wait, I know you. You were at the amphitheater with the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> I sure was, and what about it? I, I suppose we owe you an apology. When you came to us seeking to parley, I, we were sure it was a scheme to lure out the Our Lady. <gasps> we were sure about a lot of things. When she first shared her revelation, when she told us that she was not Saint Shiva reborn, we assumed it was a test. For had we not prayed for salvation... Had she not descended to deliver us from evil, she replied that our prayers but were f fuel for a fever dream, a construct of d desperation and denial. He was no savior, she said. But when we marched upon Ishgard, regardless, she pulled us from the brink of oblivion and implored us to find another way, and here we are, ready to lay down our arms at last. It's time. She considered you a friend. Had things been different, mayhap we could have been friends too. Farewell. I consider her a friend too. And I still miss her. Forsaken by gods and men, they found salvation in a revelation. They would take arms up against their own kind to set ancient wrongs to right. Cut out Ishgard's festering heart and the war would be over, this they knew, believed with all their being, until their savior told them that their efforts would be for naught. Uh, he sailed. <laughs> Where are we off to now? Oh, it's been a very long time since I've been over here, because there's no Aetherite to get all the way over here, right? So, like, 
You would either have to walk all the way over there or rely on a chocobo porter. There is some ether currents over here. I have fr a friend who never collects ether currents and she she had such a hard time getting everything from here. <laughs> She's still not done with Stormblood and Shadowbringers. Uh, like, she's done with them as Q, I mean, but just not done with the Aether Currents. And I doubt she'll ever finish the Endwalker ones either. <laughs> Hello, Gentilot. Well, if it isn't the Great Warrior of Light himself, he who slew the Dreadworm Nidhogg, bringing an end to a thousand years of war, and my very livelihood. Well, go on then, strike me down and finish the job. Stab me right in the heart, I'll even lend you my spear if you like. After all, I won't be bloody needing it. Wah ha ha, tell me the truth for a moment, I had you fooled. Ye gods, as if I could hate the man who rid us of Nidhogg. Oh, unless you worry, that business about me losing my livelihood couldn't have been further from the truth. In point of fact, Peace is proving surprisingly lucrative. As our nation's ties with Hrace Velger's blood have grown stronger and our interest in Giovanni have begun to expand, we have seen a marked increase in the number of travelers on the road. Needless to say, said travelers require protection, which we are only too happy to provide. Granted, such work will not earn you a lordship like slaying a dragon in the might, but it pays well and is far less prone to end in incineration, which seems a reasonable enough compromise, all things considered. As long as there are wars to fight, there will be those who take up arms not out of hatred or even a sense of duty, but for want of better employment, which presented with an alternative such individuals may gladly trade their swords for sights, or failing that, pledge them to a more worthy cause. And that's true though, like, they have to find a way to just move on with their lives and... Luckily, they sure did. They sure did find ways to move on. As we've seen in Stormblood and Shadowbringers. And I I really wonder what the world will look like after Endwalker. I really do. So, um, since we are halfway done... Oh, wait. Here. I'm just going to turn this in while we're here. Hello, Marsa Chom. Something the matter, son. Nath giving you trouble. A journey of remembrance, eh? Gods, it feels like only yesterday that he sail turned up in tail feather with you in tow. Back into our lives, and gone all too soon. Did I ever tell you how we found her, five years back, in a torpor, out in the forest, all by her lonesome? Aye. Well, we weren't about to let her there, so we carried her back and tended to her until she woke up. Didn't say a word for days, he sailed, just sat there and stared up at the sky, as if the ground held nothing for her. And it didn't, we learn, when she finally spoke. Now, you might think she's not one to smile, but if you'd seen her in those years that followed. Then one day, all of a sudden, she says she got a truth that must be shared. Up and leaves for the gods knows where, and that was the last we heard of her, for a time. Redemption's not beyond us, friends. Come and hear the truth. Come and hear Lady Iceheart speak. And they did, from far and wide. Or so the story went. Some said there was nothing in it, but I knew. I knew. I think, Salix, that deep down most folk want to do right by themselves and by others. And they try. Oh, how they try. You do, certainly. And so did she. And that is, we are officially halfway done with the quest line. Alrighty, well, um, I'll be right back then, gamers. I'm gonna take a bit of a bathroom break because I need one. And I'm gonna grab some water since I'm doing a lot of reading. <laughs> BRB. And I guess we're on to the next part. The legacies we leave. Marsa Chomp would seed you on your way. Apologies, you came here to think on your own memories, not listen to mine. I take it the Nath are next. Right then, if we're to do this properly, you'll need to gather up your incentive, same as before. In case you've forgotten, there's a basket of fresh callum tree, fruit, a good-sized jar of land trap nectar, and a dirty great cartload of young Nanka flesh. 
Ugh, come on, lad. Surely you can't be that bloody daft. You're more than welcome in their village already. <laughs> Safe travels. No fetch quests. No fetch quests. Remind me, how did you manage to harvest the Callum tree fruit again? Ah, yes, the Dragoon. Charming fellow, as I recall. He is a very charming fellow. And we are off. I love this music, by the way. The Stravanian Hinterlands music. Or lands, I mean. I love it. It's probably one of my favorite overall tracks in the game. I'm waiting to hear a certain part. Yep, this part, I love it. And now we are listening to Nath music. <laughs> or Vath, they're Vath. <laughs> Get what? Hunter of dragons and gods, I bid you welcome. What would you ask of me this day? Once, we would have had no conception of what you speak. The one mind does not forget, but we do. It can be most distressing. To remember is not enough. One must strain and give words to memory, and inscribe words upon parchment. This is the Chronicle's calling. He wrote of how you came to Loth Astvath, and how you left to slay Ravana, and how the young hunter trained with the old hunter while you were away. We shall treasure these memories, this history you have given us, and when the new Vath join us, we shall share with them as well. Bound no longer to the will of the enemy, they were now free to walk their own path. Thus reborn, they would write the first chapter of a new history to be passed on to future generations. And as their culture grew older and richer, so too would their story. The ruby creature, the younger hunter commands, we wonder, is it delicious? We would never eat his, of course. <laughs> oh no. But yeah, it's so wild to me how the beast traps have changed. They're, they they have changed so much in the current main story content that we are at with 5.5. .5. We are to visit Vinat Vidofnir here in Annex Trine. I have a friend, uh, he hates that Heavensward had so many bagpipe songs. <laughs> I, I don't mind it at all. I'm all the, for the high fantasy type of deal. I'm trying to see if we can get to a door. I forget, is there only one door? There should be multiple, right? There is. Hi, Vidofnir. Friend of Ysail, warrior of warriors, thou art ever welcome in Annex Trine. What bringeth thee to us this day? There is much wisdom to be gained from looking to the past, to walk half-remembered paths and mark anew their twists and turns. We do, too, do this, though not through pilgrimage nor less the written word beloved of thy historians. In song do we preserve the deeds of our lost and chronicle the passing of ages. Naught hath greater power to stir our hearts. T'was a dirge of profoundest sadness that roused Nidhogg's brood to action, a dirge which soundeth no more. Now a new song rises to fill the void, one of hope rekindled, of war's end and peace's rebirth. I shall sing of thee and Isail ever after, that all may know and remember. In the chorus, the fallen could rise once more, for none are dead whose names yet echo in the heavens, and the song would not end until the last voice fell silent. Heroes and villains, sinners and saints, all would live again. We sing of Nidhogg even now, not to praise him, but to speed his soul unto its rest, 
for even he is deserving of peace. It makes me so sad to think about Isail. <laughs> makes me so sad. And now we're here to talk to Moglin. What a chunky Moogle. <laughs> well, yank my palm and call me a molebad. I certainly wasn't expecting to see you today. Still calling yourself Salix? Er, not that there's anything wrong with that, Koopo. Anyway, what are you doing here? Thank heavens for that. I was sure you were going to ask for help with yet another one of your irks. Uh, siding quests <laughs> but by all means we'd love to pass the time reminiscing about the good old days and what better than now Koopo what would your friends be visiting and all wait here and I'll fetch them hello oh we have friends oh it's Connie Senna Full glad am I to see you again, Salix, and in Mog Home of all places. Upopopo, it really is you, and just when we were about to leave. I think it wonderful, this pilgrimage of yours, a final reflection upon the past, that you might face the future with eyes unclouded and a heart at peace. Few would deny that the events of recent days warrant such contemplation. When we last we put, stood in this place, I dare say none among our number would have believed what was to follow. Young Estinian, least of all. Upon learning what befell him at Aziz La, I confess I thought him lost. But when Master Alfino told me of your great struggle and of his salvation, I was reminded of your talent for the impossible. If you ask me, he seemed altogether too stubborn to die, though I suppose it is no small feat to evade a spite-filled worm once it's made its home in one's head. <laughs> With Nidhogg's passing, the children of Ishgard and Dravania made at last look to the future. It is my hope, however, that they will not forget the deeds of history, nor the many thousands of lives lost in their conflict, or only through remembrance Will they avoid the mistakes of the past? Oh, we all pray. We thank you again for your hospitality, Chief Ten Moglin, and pray that you will one day allow us to extend you the same courtesy. I wish you well on your journey, Salix. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. Until we meet again, Kupo. And she's gone. Even in the farthest reaches of distant, dangerous lands, one may chance upon a friendly face. Though given to mischief and largely unconcerned by the troubles of the outside world, they came to understand Ishgard's plight and agreed to lend their aid. Eventually, that is. <laughs> Emmy, hello. I hope you're doing well. I... I spent all Friday morning shopping. My capture card came in. So I will be doing a Dragon Quest XI Switch. Uh, I will be doing a Dragon Quest XI Switch uh, capture card test stream on Sunday. And I am excited. I am very, very excited to test out the capture card. Um, I don't know when I, when the next time I'm going to be streaming Dragon Quest XI is because Endwalker is so soon. But, um... Yeah, I will be at one point uh, checking out Dragon Quest XI. I'm just so happy I got a capture card for a reasonable price because the last time I tried buying a capture card was right when the pandemic started and that was the lowest price they ever were, those capture cards. And um, they've just been so expensive for a very long time until now. So I'm very excited to check out lots of Switch games. I'm going to be streaming lots and lots of Switch games next year. I want to make that very clear.
I also bought Neo The World Ends With You because it was $30. And um, I, I regret nothing <laughs> with that purchase. I really do. Xenoblade uh, is also I am eyeing Xenoblade Shin Megami Tensei 5 like I have so many switch games I want to check out and I'm so excited to start playing games on my switch again since um I'll be streaming them mostly um but first I would want to stream uh the normal world ends with you game of which I'm debating between doing the DS version or buying the switch version because I, I can get the DS version working on here. It's going to be very jank, but I can get it working. We Let me check uh, who's online today. Expert roulette, making G-pose, leveling bard. Oh, Ziggy's doing Ivalis raids. Good for him. All right. Oh wait, this is this is the spot where we made camp. Oh, this is the spot where we made camp with everyone. I'm getting a screenshot of my warrior of light. The crackling warmth of Alfino's campfire, the savory waft of Isao's bubbling stew, the snuff, the soft snoring of Moghan, sleeping on the grass. There, a cold wind that blew that night as well, and on the morrow they mounted the steps and blew the horn. But having climbed to the summit with hope in their hearts, they descended dejected, weighed down by the truths too grim to contemplate. Oh, to so many truths. Oh, I remember that cutscene with each sail and them. <gasps> oh. That was probably one of my favorite moments of the expansion. It was just the most best cast interaction I think we ever got so far since A Realm Were Born. It was just that moment with Isail and Estidian at the campfire. That was just literally one of the most, like, it actually felt like you were in a group. <laughs> and then when we came back, we had to deal with old uh, nonsense. Oh, Emmy, I'm sorry about that. There's still time to pug Ubu. Uh, Ubu Party Finder has been pog po popping. You should talk with Micah. Micah has been doing a lot of Ubu. Like, like a lot. I think Ark, well, Ark was gonna do Ubu, but after Endwalker launch. We are off to the Royal Promenade. I believe Nanamo is the only one left of the Grand Company leaders who have we not talked to yet. And I guess Amerik too, huh? <laughs> you there, over the over here, quickly. Hi. <laughs> It's her. I haven't seen her in this outfit in a very long time. I guess it's because she doesn't really need to wear this anymore, does she? At least, I hope she doesn't need to wear this anymore. <laughs> I should have known you would walk, th you would see through my disguise after all. You have seen it before, but enough talk. We cannot linger here, lest the guards recognize their sultana. <laughs> I love this music. Oh, I believe in you, Emmy. I, I hope you find some days. We have a few more days left. I, f I really think you can, you'll can. you find a day to continue progging. As you may have deduced, I was taking the air outside the palace when I saw you standing there, staring off into space. 
Have you something on your mind? I understand completely. So much has happened, so much has changed, and all in so short of a space and time. Even now, I struggle to make sense of it all. But one thing, at least, is abundantly clear. I owe you an immense debt of gratitude for all you have done on my behalf and on behalf of those whom I hold dear. Aww. After I awoke, Papa Sean told me everything. It was a lot to take in, but nothing could prepare me for what Lord Lolorito had to say. That ruthless, manipulative swine came before me and expressed regret for what had come to pass, and thinking to make amends, offered all of Teleji Elaleji's assets, as well as half of his own personal fortune, to the crown. And I accepted. <laughs> Long did I debate how best to use this wealth. There is no end to the troubles facing our nation, and no shortage of worthwhile causes. Yet none among our people have suffered more than the refugees, and it is they who shall be first to receive aid and succor. There is also the matter of the terrible wrongs committed against you and yours, for which I am in the large part responsible. Nay, do not protest. It is the truth. Accordingly, I have set aside monies to aid in the Scion's rebuilding, if you would have them. Um, yes. <laughs> I think my first time I said no, but I think this time I'm actually just going to say yes. <laughs> Pray do not thank me, not after all you have suffered, and know that I do not think to atone for my mistakes with money. It is but a tool which I would see put to good use. She makes a very good point. Oh, listen to me. So much for enjoying a moment's respite outside the palace walls. It rather seems as if I have brought my responsibilities with me. I suppose I should I return. Lady Lilira! Lady Lilira! You must come home at once. Father is worried sick, you know. God, confound it. You lot, search for this area. I know she came through here. On the other hand, it is essential that a ruler first see how her subjects go about their daily lives, and I have not visited the markets in weeks. Oh, it would be a shame to let this opportunity go to waste. Salix, might I impose on you to have a brief yet cordial conversation with those sultan sworn? I leave the choice of subject matter up to you. Take care. <laughs> and there she goes. Nah. Nanamo. And it's it's so wild to see how the Grand Company leaders have all changed so much in over the past few expansions. And I really wonder what their their final arc is gonna sound like or seem like during Endwalker MSQ. Ah, I beg your pardon, sir, but did you perchance see a lot young Lala fell and noble woman pass this way? No. <laughs> Are you certain? Oh dear, Master Papashan said this might happen, but I never truly believed he was serious. <laughs> um, and now we I believe we're on the final part of the quest line. Uh, but give me one moment. My Let me drink some more water because what we have coming up here might make me cry a lot. The triumphs we share. The Sultan Sword Elite sports a faintly troubled expression, as if straining to remember something important. Wait, I know you. You're Salix. Salix Hirasol. What a stroke of luck. I can think of none better qualified to help us, you see. It is no mere noble woman that we seek. Ah, but Master Papashan was most explicit about the need for secrecy. Pray forget I mentioned it. We will find this. We will find the lady on our own. <laughs> Goodbye. What a cruel fate to lose her father as a child and be compelled to rule in his stead. And how the years had tempered her dreams and taught her, sometimes brutally, the price of naivety. Though outwardly unscathed by her ordeal, it is a wiser and more wary Nanamo who reclaimed the throne. 
Oh, Anonimo. And now we are back to Revenant's Toll. I believe the triumphs we share is the final quest, but I'll check my journal just to be sure. Let's see, side story quests. Where is Tales of the Dragon Song War? Oh no, no it's not. We have another, okay. I thought this was the last one. Alion. Oh, Ali oh, it's been a minute since I've talked to Alion. Hello. There you are, Salix. Higgity told me of your pilgrimage. I knew it was only a matter of time before you sought me out. I too have been reflecting on the choices which shaped my path. When I took to the road with my grandfather, when I joined the Crystal Braves, when I tried and failed to warn you before the banquet, I had my suspicions about Will Red's death. That w it was the work of a Garlean spy within our ranks, but I could not be so sure who was involved, hence my desire to speak with you in private. I thought long and hard about how to approach you without arousing suspicion, Mayhap too long. Eventually, I decided to arrange a meeting through Mistress Momodi. Little did I know that bastard Laurentius had see seen me do it. Shortly thereafter, the fourth received urgent summons. Needless to say, I had no choice but to answer and soon found myself at the mercy of Captain Ilbrand's band of traitors. They confined me to the Rising Stones, along with others still loyal to the Scions, Riol, Ephemy, and Argmus. Quite what they planned to do with us, I couldn't say. Mayhap they thought we would turn, given time. The fools. Lieutenant Yuhase bid the third keep us under constant guard, but when Captain Ilbird moved to carry out General Raubon's execution, they were forced to withdraw all but a token force, which we took by surprise one night, and then it was over. One might argue that it turned out better than it had any right to, all things considered, still. There are nights when I lie awake wondering if I had done things differently, if I had been more careful, more decisive. What then? But there is not to be gained from thinking thus. We must count our blessings, must we not? We are still here, and most of what was broken can be rebuilt. You will see, Salix. You will see. Farewell. Goodbye, Alion. For the freedom of all, it had begun with an oath and ended with betrayal. As the conspirators turned on their comrades for coin and country, the good and true were beaten and imprisoned, or else butchered where they stood. But even in their darkest moments, they never stopped believing that the dawn's light would shine again. They never stopped believing. And they still, they still have never stopped believing. Even now, before N. Walker. Oh god, I think we're about to see Sid again. <laughs> Dude. Are we about to see Sid again? Oh, Stefan Evian! Hello! He's really tall, isn't he? <laughs> Why, hello there, Salix. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> Hello, these two. Reminiscing about the glory days, huh? Aye, we've spent many a sleepless night hammering away in that corner of ours. How's your mana cuts are holding up, by the way? Ah, that's good to hear. Not that I had any doubts, like our craftsmanship second to none. Quite right. It will take more than swirling winds and raging dragons to bring her down, and that, my friend, is an ironworks guarantee. Speaking of which, on the back of the field test success, we've gone ahead and licensed the design for mass production. Soon, the Sky Steel Manufactory will be churning out mana cutters by the dozen. 
which is why we're here today, as a matter of fact, to make sure their ma machinists don't bugger anything up. Apparently, adventurers have been queuing up to place an order, and even some sky pirates. Ah, just imagining the sea of clouds steaming with our creations fills me with a father's pride. The, the Sky Pirates have been talked about in the Shadows of Mock Alliance raids, <laughs> which some people think are, is going to become important and Walker, but we will see. I have my doubts. <laughs> right then. That's enough patting ourselves on the back. We've got to make sure the cutters are up to snuff, or Jesse will never let us hear the end of it. From now till we finish, there will be no more breaks, distractions, and not one wink asleep. You hear me? <laughs> Oh, my, 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 my. card chocobo. What? <laughs> well, we'll leave you to it. Till next time, huh? Till next time. Despite the many hardships they had endured, or perhaps because of them, they greeted every new challenge with a smile. Their workshop, their battlefield, their tools, their weapons. They've invariably rose to the occasion, delivering ingenious solutions to seemingly insoluble problems. And we are off to the churning mist. Oh. It's been a while since I've been over here in that area, the monstery. At this point, I don't have really much to say. I just, just am moving along with this quest line. Yeah, that's how I basically feel. Just very, just melancholy, actually. This spot was where we could see, I believe, the Aerie, right? There it is. Through tempestuous winds, they carved a path, reaching the Dreadworm Sanctum, and there did they put him to the sword. Yet in the wake of hard-fought victory, were secrets laid bare in a vision dark and disturbing. The legacy of the fathers, bequeathed to their sons and passed down through the generations, old blood enduring in the new, the mark of the original sin. This was where we saw the truth. And we are going all the way back to Ishgard to see Hilda. Who, um, I haven't seen Hilda in a very, very, very long time. Holy cow. I think she's in the Machinist quest. But yeah, it's been so long. There they are. Oh my gosh, you're so tall. Some R's have put down their arms and picked up building implements instead. It was like only yesterday that we were feuding with nobles and fending off dragons, but time can change, huh? We've all got high hopes for the firmament, Ilda not least of all. Barely champing at the bit to watch over the district she is. And there she is, Ilda herself. Everybody loves her. <laughs> Oh, 
And there he is at last. Gibralant said you were wandering all over, reminiscing about days gone by. Seems a bit soon if you ask me. It's not like I don't understand though. Some days, I'll be walking through the broom same as normal, and it'll hit me all of a sudden just how much has changed for us. Though I know it's a bit different from what you've been through. Puts me in mind of the first time I saw him and his friends up near the Aetherite, being shown around by that house for Tom, man. Oh, oh! You never told me you'd met before. <laughs> it weren't so much a meeting as a heckling, to be honest. When I heard their kind warning them off paying a visit to the broom, it st stuck in my craw. And you've got to admit that Master Alfie knows the spitting image of a snotty little lordling. <laughs> he sure is. A little lordling then went on to fight two Knights of the Heavens Ward with Salix here in a trial by combat. Not to mention, helping retake the vault from the True Brothers. Fury have mercy, it feels like a bleeding lifetime ago, don't it? Oh, it wasn't Amaric who we were- it was Alfino we were fighting with <laughs> over there, I see now. Because it was. What we've got now is nothing like what came before. It's a bleeding rebirth is what it is. Hold comfort to the folk who died getting us here. Still, this peace is ours, and we owe it to ourselves to make the most of it. Meaning we've got to work twice as hard to make the broom a better place. And no more harassing blue bloods neither. <laughs> no more. Aye aye. A world apart from the opulence of the pillars they had toiled, shrouded in the haze of the broom, sentenced to a life of hardship by birth, they dreamed of revolution as children of the fairies. The, then one came and went, and they suddenly found themselves with the seat at the table. Aw. Um, before I talk to Hilda... I have been working on the Ishgard restoration story. I actually did a few streams a few months ago of literally everything you can see from the firmament. Like, I I tried to check out everything. Can I get to the firmament map from here? I cannot, unfortunately. But yeah, I did. That was such a wonderful extension of the Heavensward story. And I really hope. I'm just speaking this, and I'm hoping I'm speaking this into existence. I really hope one day to actually see the broom be restored. I really do. I know you got Sir Shari Bird in the end, but I have to admit, yeah, I'm still a little bitter if it wasn't me. Give gave me a reason to practice my marksmanship, though. Haha, <laughs> -ha, it just goes to show you that you can't judge a man by appearances, huh? nor tell what fate's got in store for you. All the more reason to watch your words when you're in your cups. <laughs> Perhaps it's time to watch the expanded its duties. Maybe help out with the reconstruction efforts. <laughs> Believe me, y'all have a lot of reconstructing to do, and y'all still have a lot of reconstructing to do. <laughs> I really, really hope one day to see this place cleaned up. I, maybe one day I'll get housing in this card, but um, with the lottery system, uh, who knows. Oh, clouds part and let shine brilliant sun upon Lo Lonuvanu. Great netherling warrior returns to Okzundu and on a pilgrimage of remembrance? Well, well. We bid you warmest welcome, slayer of false gods and champion of fallen Gundu whose fledgling village continues to grow and prosper, now free from the shadow of Vundu oppression. But Lord Va Lord, but Lonu Vanu is not one to forget Netherling's first coming, when he saves us from certain death at the hands of the Black Ones, distant memory though it is. Yes, his many deeds are the stuff of legends. We shall remember the stories, and the hero's name, Salix Hirasol. For they are worthy of celebration now and ever after. An earnest and good-natured people, they had borne witness to the rage of their beloved god's twisted manifestation and proclaimed it to be false. By the grace of kind travelers were they duly delivered from its wrath, 
and the mad god's death signaling the birth of a new hero. Gales of laughter raining down like hail big as stone. Old Netherling, when Gunavanu thinks of brother's failures, mine turns to dark places. <laughs> It pleases Netherling if you are welcome to partake in a fresh Wamura Kampe before parting. Tender, supple flesh gives way to sticky. No? Then as raging typhoon strips beelds bare, Lonu Vanu shall devour all. Oh my gosh, ew. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna talk to Emitra. We have I um the last time I talked to Emitra on stream was when I actually did all the summoner job quests. <laughs> I feel so bad because I literally just did not care. I just, I'm glad I have the summoner job quest out of the way though because in Endwalker, uh, I'm going to pick up summoner and practice it when I can. It won't be immediately because I'm going to be going through MSQ as Black Mage and Sage, but eventually, sometime in December, I would like to, um, I would very much like to check out uh, the new summoner. Hello, Emitra. It's been a very, very long time. Well met, Salix. What brings you here this night? Indeed, though it seems an age, it was not all that long ago that we rescued Stola from the live stream. How quickly we began to forget even those memories most precious to us. In my defense, I might add that I have rarely missed an opportunity to make new memories with my sister in the days since her return. Our conversations are largely on matters of scientific and professional concern, ancient elegant technologies, primals, Asians, and so forth. She has an insatiable thirst for knowledge, as you know. Yet, while I understand her desire not to burden those around her with her troubles and to carry on as she did before, I worry that her willingness to manipulate her own ether to compensate for the loss of her sight may dire re have dire repercussions. <laughs> yeah, she's right. She never told you then, but of course not. T'would rather have defeated the purpose. You should know that the technique she employs places a tremendous strain on her body. She is, of course, well aware of her limits and more than willing to ignore them should she deem it necessary. I pray you see that she does not. <laughs> well, uh, we will see next expansion. We will see. Regrettably, she is wont to ignore my advice when it does not suit her. Give it, yet, given your shared experiences, mayhaps she will be more willing to heed your warnings. Her sister was under no illusions as to the dangers of the life she had chosen. Should the worst come to the worst, Istola would do what needed to be done, pay any price, make any sacrifice, and that without hesitation. She was a woman of conviction, deserving of respect and admiration, and no small amount of worry. Alas, my studies of Allegan technology have not yielded any earth-shattering revelations as of yet. Rest assured, however, I will inform Tataru immediately should that unhappy state of affairs come to change. And we are now at the end of the fourth part. And um yeah, I am I am particularly worried <sighs> that I am gonna be bawling by this next part. Oh, why must governing great goblin nation be so difficult? Like herding corals, stupid corals with muchly deferring views on glorious nation's future direction. Yes, yes, Slowfix knows he's letting emotions run wild. Uplander is welcome voice of reason. Not like when Uplander's first returned to Idleshire, yes? So much venom in that one's tongue flaps calling Gobby Flock thieves, but Slowflix saw way to mutual understanding. 
Citizenship in society is first step in strengthening communal ties, gives all vested interest in continued prosperity of egalitarian utopia. <laughs> Children of the land, can you hear? Well, that is the end of that part of the quest line. Um, I'm debating what I want to do next, you know? Uh, I because we only have one more quest le yet left, and I don't think I need to be RB. <clears throat> but yeah, I think I will. I will. Um, yeah, I'll be. Oh, this is a really good shot. <laughs> yeah, I will be right back once again, and this will be the final stretch. Let's wrap this up. This should be the final stretch of this quest line. For the final objective of this quest, you will receive no guidance from the journal or the duty list. You will need to read the text carefully and decipher the clues to determine your next course of action. Slowfix is a goblin beset by troubles great and small. Gaw! And now... Slowflix bids Uplander fulfill civic duty as citizen of Idleshire with hand lending of great import. In a cave south of the settlement lives Old Crone, wielder of powerful magics used to crafty make frogmen that chase away curious gobbies. Uplander has made many busy deals with Old Crone, yes. <laughs> the Uplander can appeal to Crone's better nature and make her call off frogmen harriers. <laughs> Gobby Flock does not go looking for trouble. Trouble comes looking for Gobby Flock. Honest. <laughs> oh, let me see if I can uh, show off the journal so far. Yeah, we will not get. Uh, you, we will get guidance. Uh, this quest line says that there's other quests in the game that do that type of thing, where like they're, we aren't gonna have hints for you in the, anywhere. But um, there, there's hints. There's enough hints. To ask, to ye who ask of things to come, give thought to what is in past and gone. Such is the wisdom of Baladian poet king. You know what? I'll read all this at the end. Uh, how about that? <laughs> I, I decided I will read it all at the very end. Let's just get the heck out of here. I love that there's no Aetherite in the Dravania and Hinterlands. By the way, I sure love it. No, I don't. I hate it. Alright. To the Dravanian Hinterlands Western. There's so many dungeons out here. It's so quiet out here. You know, I just realized that the music out here for the Hinterlands is the same is it remixed over here in the Arboretum. I only just now do I realize that. I'm also since it's getting really dark and all my cutscenes are happening at nighttime, I'm gonna fix my character lighting. If I can ever find it. I am so bad at finding it. I think it's under system graphics settings. Character lighting. We're going to turn this up to like 33. There to make it a bit easier to see. Where are we off to then? Do you have anything to say? No. All right, in we go. Matoya. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. I'm well aware that you're only here because you want something, but at least you didn't bring your little friend, so out with it. <laughs> Old woman. 
Oh, is that what the goblins told you? That my servants were attacking their poor defenseless scouts without the slightest provocation? Ha! Huh. The little buggers were trying to eat them. They're lucky I didn't have any paragos return the favor. But you can tell them from me that if they try it again, I will personally feed them to my servants one limb at a time. I do hope you didn't come all this way just to play errand boy for those dirty little scroungers. No, 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 no. Aren't you a bit young to be going on grand journeys of reflection? You haven't lived long enough to have so many regrets. Oh, oh if only Matoya... I don't even know if Matoya would still say that to, all these years later. <laughs> the same goes for that boy, complaining that things hadn't unfolded as he dreamed they would. It makes no difference what should have happened to Menphilia. What matters is what did happen. The past is the past, and no amount of wishing you'd done things differently will make it so. You make your choices, and you do what needs to be done. That's it. That's the attitude you came here with the first time, and you wanted to find a way to get to Ozzy's Law, and you would do well to remember it. Right then, I think you've wasted enough of my time. It is bad enough that I have to suffer your stolas and unannounced visits. I don't need you making a habit of it too. <laughs> she was the sum of everything that had become before. Triumphs, failures, all essential, all indispensable. Had things unfolded differently, so too would she. What use then, to mourn the woman who never was? There was only this time, this place, this choice. Mayhap if I hung a sign around their necks saying Goblin Eater in big letters they'd think twice. <laughs> And we are off to mourn the woman. I... I don't know how I'm gonna handle the next few minutes here. I really don't. This was the spot up in the sky where we saw it happen. This was this moment. This was... Don't forget this moment. You spy something on the ground at the landing's edge. It's a blue bouquet. Just a blue bouquet. I'm, I'm, I am going to G-pose while I have the chance here. I'm so tall, it's hard to get everything in here. Let's see, can I get rid of the shine? Yeah, there's no way to get rid of the shine. I just wasn't prepared.
Uh, goodbye, everyone. It's hard to fit everything in. I'm sorry to interrupt this with G-posing. I'm just taking my time. Just because who knows when I'll ever come back to this. All right, let's check it out. A bouquet of fresh Nymea lilies lies at your feet, an offering for the departed. Um, in this year's Rising, they talked about Nymea lilies, and it's really, it's heart-wrenching to see them here again, and now have a better understanding of their meaning. It's really, a thousand, thousand fires blossomed around her as she fell towards the battleship. A crimson star shower amidst the impassive clouds. They didn't miss you sail. I feel so bad. She had so much, so much going for her. Then came the azure light, vain at first, soon blinding, then shattering, casting motes of diamond to the four winds. For those we have lost. Um, so this is going to be awkward because of events that happened in 5.4 and 5.5. Um, but remember, this is supposed to take place in Heaven's Ward after finishing 3.3. But yeah, the visit Tiamat objective over there, um, do not perceive do not perceive that uh, this is right before n walker um, things have changed but um luckily the programming behind quests uh makes uh, things go back to what they originally were in the time of the, of the new game plus but yeah um things has changed a lot recently <laughs> Where is she? Yeah, um, just wait for it. <laughs> Here we are. Child of man, chosen of Hydaelyn, not remaineth for thee here save the delusions of the condemned. In my madness did I spy my departed brood brother in yonder skies, though I know it cannot be claimed to be so. What sayest thou, my senses are yet mine own? Then he whom I saw was but my dead brother's rancor clad in mortal flesh. And thou didst deliver him unto death's cold embrace. I bear thee no ill will, child, tis beyond me. All my hatreds are bound up in moments of ephemeral and eternal, my beloved's passing and his resurrection. I am no better than Nidhogg, consumed by love, twisted by rage, I too sought vengeance without end. Midgard Sower, <laughs> yet thou hast since renounced it, hast thou not? That little rat with wings. <laughs> Though millennia have I watched as time did that which I could not, as the men of Alag perished and their works fell to ruin, leaving me to think on mine own sins in solitude. What folly to despise man his base desires, when hatred's hand so effortlessly drove me to take Astian red. Then look thou on him again with mine eyes unclouded, and mark how he laboreth to rise above his nature. How he and his Felger's brood now raise their voices in a shared song of peace. Tis my dearest hope 
That shall prove the unfounding stone for a bulwark against the dark. As time delivered a lag unto its reward, so too will it prove this peace true or fleeting, as I remain here apart and watch. Chosen of Hydaelyn, it is well thou camest unto me in contemplation, but the road stretcheth ever on, and thy battle is not yet won. Perhaps there was hope for them, perhaps this time they would learn and remember, but her part in the tale had ended long ago. Within this monument to hubris, would she remain until the end of days? Oh, the end of days, huh? I'm gonna... I'm gonna send this to my friend. Very, very good timing. Very, very good timing. And now we are off to the ethereal, ethereal chemical research facility. And what wait is for us here? This was where the final moments of 3.0 were. The undying ones were defiant, disbelieving, even as death embraced them. Then the knights too succumbed, loyal to the last, to a cause long lost. His body growing light, the archbishop looked upon the arbiter of his fate, and knew not what he saw. And then it was over. Naught remained save the eyes. Thinking to bear them away from the covetous hands of men, Estinian took the cursed baubles of his own, and was duly bent to their will, if only for a time. At a friend's behest had they embarked upon their journey, and so, after their triumphant homecoming and all the pomp and circumstance, there was but one way it could end. At a friend's behest had they embarked upon their journey, And now we are at the end of the quest line. Pay respects to a friend. Unable to open the map at this time. We are supposed to go. I don't know how I, I could knew where to go immediately. We're supposed to go to Camp Dragonhead. And this is where the ending part of the quest line is. And this is where people stood vigil at the end of Heaven's Ward for Stormblood maintenance, and it makes me wonder if there's going to be a spot where people are going to stand vigil for Endwalker maintenance. Makes me really wonder, but we are to pay respects to a friend. And we have a friend waiting for us here, too. <sighs> oh, I was hoping to get the eyes open shot. And there it is, we are paying respects to him.
<laughs> the burdens we bear. Um, yeah, for completing the quest line for the first time, you would have gotten the heart of on emote. And there he is. Yeah, we have this guy waiting and visiting every once in a while. Uh, let me read the journal very quickly since we still have some time before I have to leave for the day. So, over here, I believe it's the, um, yeah. To ye who ask of things to come, give thought of what is past and gone. Such was the wisdom of Beladian poet king, and the steward believes you would do well to heed it. Moved by his heartfelt words, you resolve there and then make to make a pilgrimage of sorts, retracing your first fateful steps into the land of Ishgard. The road stretched on, obscured by an endless veil of snow. Somewhere in the white beyond stood the great iron gates, and on the other side, a humble manservant who awaited the coming of three travelers. Merchants of all nations speak of a common tongue, and its words are coin. Needless to say, there is little profit to be had in prejudice, especially against those who have received the patronage of a count. Thus, when the wards of House for Tom arrived at the market, they found Elise very happy to make their acquaintance. De Brillant knew everyone's worry, though he would never share his own. An optimist, he wanted to believe in the best in people. Sometimes that faith would be rewarded, other times betrayed, but he would listen regardless and he would hope. For all of Lainey Laniat's disdain, it was an old familiar dance to her. Lord Amonalane would always be the boy fumbling for a compliment, and perhaps there was comfort in that, a memory of home on the bleak frontier. An honorable man, of mindful of tradition, Lord Artorel was loath to accept the assistance of a foreigner in exile, but when forced to confront bitter truths, he looked within and found himself wanting. Pride be damned. Then, if it led one astray, he would set aside his prejudices and join hands with this gifted outcast for the greater good of Ishgard. Two foreign heretics against two knights of the Heaven's Ward, under the watchful gaze of the Fury, they would fight and the winner's claims would be proven true. It was the opening gambit of a greater game whose stakes would remain unknown for some time. To walk the righteous paths, to live for the sake of others, to rise to the highest station, yet remain powerless to bring an end to your people's suffering. What price salvation, then? What sacrifice beyond reason? For uneasy lies the head that wears a crown, as the Archbishop knew all too well. Merle Wibb had never been one to retreat, much less in the face of transparent the theatrics, but this had been no ordinary battlefield, its rules of engagement anything but clear. So she would watch, and she would learn, and in time, she would act. From far across the sea had the Dolmens come, seekers of sanctuary whose home was no more. Scorned by some and embraced by others, uh, give me one moment to adjust the... the this. There we go. <laughs> and also lower the performance. There we go. And then I need to pull this up again. I just uh, want to make sure I can actually get this. Scorned by some, embraced by others, they had found a new purpose in a frontier land. First, as builders, then as warriors. For to whom much is given, much is expected. To ye who ask of things to come, give thought of what is past and gone. With the long dead poet king's words still ringing in your ears, you continue your pilgrimage, retracing the steps you took during your days in exile. Ilbert had grown impatient, and so too the hour of execution was at hand. Swift action was required, a blood rescue, and should the good gods be good, a chance for retribution. A refugee of fallen all amigo, Rauban had risen from the depths of poverty to claim a seat on the syndicate, yet for all of his great deeds, one was left undone, and like sands through hourglass, the years slipped by, taking with them an old friend's hope. The trail led to the mills far to the north, 
Though they appeared abandoned at first glance, their cellars hid a secret. A heretic lair occupied by Lady Iceheart herself. But upon being discovered, Isale made no attempt to fight. Forsaken by gods and men, the heretics found salvation in Revelation. They would take up arms against their own kind to set up ancient wrongs to right, cut out Ishgard's festering heart, and the war would be over. This they knew, believed with all their being, until their savior told them their efforts would be for naught. As long as there are wars to fight, there will be those who take up arms not out of hatred or even a sense of duty, but for want of better employment. When presented with an alternative, such individuals may gladly trade their swords for sights, or failing that, pledge them to a more worthy cause. Marcia Chomp had tried to fill the hole in her heart, to give her a new home, a new family, but he knew there were still nights when he sailed dreamed of the wall of ice, of bodies in the snow, of feathered wings and azure skies, and though he prayed that she would stay, he could see that it was hopeless. She would leave him. It was only a matter of time. To ye who ask of things to come, give thought to what is past and gone. With the long dead poet king's words still ringing in your ears, you continue your pilgrimage, retracing the steps you took during your time in Dravania. At once, Marcia Chomp saw she had changed. The fire was still there, but tempered somehow. Even so, he would not spoil things by asking. His sail was returned. Though it be but for a moment, it was enough. No longer bound by the will of many, the Vath were free to walk their own path. Thus reborn, they would write the first chapter of a new history to be passed on to future generations. And as their culture grew older and richer, so too would their story. In the chorus... The Dravanian Fallen could rise once, once more, for none are dead whose names yet echo in the heavens, and the song would not end until the last voice fell silent, heroes and villains, sinners and saints, all would live again. Even in the farthest reaches of distant, dangerous lands, one may chance upon a friendly face. Though the Mughals were given to mischief and unconcerned by the troubles of the outside world, they came to understand Ishgard's plight and agreed to lend their aid. Eventually, that is. The cracking warmth of Alfino's campfire, the savory waft of Isale's bubbling stew, the snoring of Maghan asleep on the grass, a cold wind blew that night as well, and on the morrow, they mounted the steps and blew the horn. But having climbed to the summit with hope in their hearts, they descended dejected, weighed down by the truths too grim to contemplate. Nanamo lived, not by the crates of the gods, but by the guile of an old man. Lolorito claimed the ruse had been unnecessary to expose the traitors in their midst and unravel their machinations. Such schemes are not without cost, however, and a merchant must needs pay his debts. Perhaps the principal choice would have been to refuse the coin, to condemn Lolorito's pretense at charity. Indeed, a part of the her wanted to do far worse, but its ruler is required to take a wider view to consider the practical re realities, and Nanamo had not forgotten what had come of following her heart. To ye who ask of things to come, give thought of to what is past and gone. With the long dead poet king's words still ringing in your ears, you continue your pilgrimage, retracing the steps you took in the days following your exile. What a cruel fate to lose her father as a child and be compelled to rule in his stead. And how the years had tempered her dreams and taught her, sometimes brutally, the price of naivety. Though outwardly unscathed by her ordeal, it was a wiser and more wary Nanamo who reclaimed the throne. For the freedom of all, it had begun with an oath and ended with a betrayal. As the conspirators turned on their comrades for a coin and country, the, co the good and true were beaten and imprisoned, or else butchered where they stood. But even in their darkest moments, Alion and the other loyalists knew that the dawn's light would shine again. Despite the many hardships they had endured, or perhaps because of them, Biggs and Wedge greeted every new challenge with a smile. Their workshop, their battlefield, their tools, their weapons. They invariably rose to the occasion, delivering ingenious solutions to seemingly insoluble problems. Through temps tempestuous winds, they carved a path, reaching through the Dreadworm Sanctum, and there they did put him to the sword, 
Yet in the wake of hard-fought victory were secrets laid bare in a vision of one moment. Okay, so where were we? Yet in the wake of hard-fought victory were, uh, were secrets laid bare in a vision dark and disturbing. The legacy of the fathers bequeathed to their sons and passed down through the generations. Old blood enduring in the new, the mark of the original sin. A world apart from the opulence of the pillars, Hilda and her people toiled, shrouded in the haze of the broom, sentenced to a life of hardship by birth. They dreamed of revolution as children dream of fairies. Then one came and went, and they suddenly found themselves with a seat at the table. An earnest and good-natured people, the Zundu tribe had borne witness to the rage of their beloved god's twisted manifestation and proclaimed it to be false. By the grace of kind travelers were they tru duly delivered from its wrath and the mad god's death signaling the birth of a new hero. Emitra knew that her sister had been under no illusions as to the dangers of the life she had chosen. Should the worst come to pass, Istola would do what needed to be done. Pay any price, make any sacrifices, and that without hesitation. She was a woman of conviction, deserving of respect and admiration, and no small amount of worry. From the ashes of an abandoned colony would their brave new nation rise, a free and equal society for goblin and man, in which scholars and craftsmen could work together to build a better life. It would be nothing short of a paradise, in theory at least. And finally, to ye who ask of things to come, give thought to what is past and gone. With the long dead poet king's words still ringing in your ears, you continue your pilgrimage retracing the steps you took in the days following your exile. Having made peace with the goblins, the travelers returned to their original purpose. The reclusive Master Matoya waited somewhere beyond, and with her, a means to breach the barrier shielding Aziz Allah. She was the sum of everything that had come before. Triumphs, fails, all essential, all indispensable. Had things unfolded differently, so too would she. What use, then, to mourn the Matoya who never was? There was only this time, this place, this choice. The battleship loomed before them, a gargantuan mass of steel, bristling with cannons, each trained on the Enterprise Excelsior. Sid's knuckles were white as he gripped the controls, straining to steer the tiny vessel through the storm of ordnance. They fell about as the deck lurched further and yawned, each explosion inviting a cry of protest from the battered ship. A thousand thousand fires blossomed around his sail as she fell towards the battleship, a crimson star shower amidst the impassive clouds, and then came the azure light, faint at first, soon blinding, then shattering, casting motes of diamond to the four winds. Perhaps there was hope for them, perhaps this time they would learn to remember, but Tiamat's part in the tale ended long ago, within this monument to the hubris would she remain until the end of days, beyond redemption. The undying ones were defiant, disbelieving even as death embraced them. Then the knights too succumbed, loyal to the last, to a cause long lost. His, his body growing light, the archbishop looked upon the arbiter of his fate, and knew not what he saw, and to then it was over, over save for the eyes. Thinking to bear them away from the covetous hands of man, Estidian took the accursed baubles of his own, and was duly bent to their will, if only for a time. At a friend's behest, had they embarked upon their journey, and so, after their triumphant homecoming and all the inevitable pomp and circumstance, there was but one way it could end. The shield still rests against a marker, and below it, fresh lilies. Closing your eyes, you kneel and breathe, deep the cold Corinthian wind. There you remain for no more than a moment before rising to take in the view. The city still stands, and so do you. The paths we walk, the oaths we swear, the legacies we leave, the triumphs we share, the burdens we bear. And that is the end of the Tales of the Dragon Song War Quest line. Hello, Otto. I love Heaven's Ward a lot, and uh, it pro was probably one of my favorite parts of the journey so far. Let me try to get Otto in the screenshot, too. Hey, <laughs> hey. There it is, Ishgard.
Let me see if I can... There we go. Much better. But yeah, that is it. And again, I love Heaven's Ward a lot. <laughs> it was such a good time and... I really hope to love and walker as much. That is the end of my streams for now. Um, the next uh, New Game Plus stream we will be doing will be the Omega Raids. And that will be a very, very fun time. And I hope I can catch y'all. I will be live later tonight with E12S. My second to last E12S stream. And hopefully we will clear tonight. But yeah. With that, I'm gonna leave things off here facing Ishgard hopeful for the future of Endwalker thank you all so much for watching